The DJI Pocket 3 and the Mini 4 Pro make up what I think is probably the most ideal travel camera setup. But before we talk about why, let me show you a short sequence that I shot using just the Pocket 3 and Mini 4 Pro. Wintertime in Alaska is dark, but you still have to get out. You have to. Even when it's cold and the sun isn't going to be up for three or four more hours. Because if you wait, you're going to miss it. When the sun finally does come up and illuminates the harsh, frozen landscape, it's unlike anything else. Just like that, the sun goes back down. The days may be short, but the winter sun holds incredible beauty, but only for those who get out. In order for this to be one of the best travel camera setups, it needs to be small and compact, but it needs to not compromise too much on performance. But it also needs to be really hassle-free for using it because when you're traveling, things happen fast and you wanna be able to just grab a camera, go and capture great footage. And then it also needs to come in at a decent price point, which this does. For all of this here, you're gonna spend less than $2,000 if you buy it brand new from DJI. Now I've been working with both of these things since they came out and I've been using them a lot for the last few weeks, especially we're deep into winter here in Alaska, which means I have cold weather tested these to the max. Both of them I've run out at well below zero and they've both worked well. For the performance, both the Pocket 3 and the Mini 4 Pro deliver great image quality and perform in spades when it comes to capturing you on your adventures or whatever you might be doing. They both do a great job. The Mini 4 Pro can capture really good aerials. It has great active track features. And the reason I picked this over the Mini 3 is that it has 360 obstacle avoidance and much better active track, but you could easily substitute a Mini 3 Pro if you're wanting to save a little bit of money. But the Mini 4 Pro, just offers some fantastic image quality, both in video and photo modes. You can get some great imagery and because it's under 249 grams, it means that you're not as restricted and you often don't need the same kind of licenses in many areas of the world. But not only that, I've traveled the world with drones and when you show up with a larger drone, a lot of times you get questions at customs, but with the Mini 4 Pro or the Mini 3 Pro, it's super small and lightweight and tiny, and it looks like a toy drone. So often they don't even care about it. So while it's under 249 grams, if you use the standard batteries, not the plus batteries, you can get some incredible imagery. You can get some great tracking shots of yourself. You can get great photos all from a drone that is really small, compact, but can also handle a lot. I've flown this thing in incredibly heavy winds, and so long as you don't get too close to your subject in those heavy winds, your shots still come out looking smooth and stable and absolutely beautiful. But while a drone is great to have anytime you're traveling because of those great aerials and photos and the perspective that it can provide, you also wanna have a ground camera, and that's where the Pocket 3 comes in and delivers in spades. Not only does it have fantastic low light performance, which is really important, but you get this 
great stabilized gimbal shot pretty much in any conditions, no matter what you're doing, walking, talking, anything like that, you can get some great, great stable footage from this. And I do recommend you get the creator combo because getting good audio is super important. I wanna show you an example here of where I'm just using the internal mics on the Pocket 3, and then I switch to the DJI mic in extremely heavy winds. But if we turn the DJI mic back on, the audio cleans up incredibly well. I mean, do you see how windy it is? I checked and just a little bit from here, there's a weather station that's blowing 35 miles an hour. So not only does that make a huge difference with audio, but you can also use the mic to remote start and stop recording on the Pocket 3, and you can stand quite a ways away from the Pocket 3 and still get good solid audio. But you also get the extra battery pack, which means, or the battery handle, which means you get much longer run times. But back on the video quality, the Pocket 3 can deliver fantastic video quality. And because it includes active track in there, you can get some great shots of yourself or a subject moving through an area that takes some of the work off of you as far as keeping yourself in frame or worrying about what's in frame, you can simply active track a subject and let the camera do the rest. And another reason I like to use these two together is because they both shoot in D log M, they both shoot 4K and 4K up to 120 frames a second on the Pocket 3. 4K up to 100 frames a second on the Mini 4 Pro, you can get some nice slow motion shots. They both shoot great 4K 60, which means you can slow things down just a little bit and give everything a little bit of a dreamy feel if you want to. And because they're both shooting D-Log M, they match up really well in post to look like they were shot on the same camera, which is a huge issue if you're shooting on a lot of different kinds of cameras is making them look similar so it doesn't jar your audience when they're watching the video back. Now the biggest weakness of the Pocket 3 is the photos. So if you're gonna do a lot of photo work, there might be a better camera out there. You'd have to spend a fair bit more money, but uh, it only shoots nine, nine and a half megapixel stills. Now they look great. I have no hesitations about sharing them on social media or posting them online. That's not a problem at all. It's just if you're gonna wanna blow them up or print them out or something like that, you're gonna be a lot more limited with the Pocket 3. But you also still have the Mini 4 Pro, which takes fantastic photos. They're 12 megapixels. You can do a 48 megapixel mode if you want to, but the 12 megapixels to me looks great. So if you really wanna get good photos, then just use the Mini 4. You could even just handhold it and take photos with the Mini 4 if you want to. And just so you know, this video isn't sponsored by anybody, but if you like the way the footage from the Pocket 3 or the Mini 4 Pro has looked, then you can check out my LUT pack down in the description. It includes a conversion LUT that will take your Pocket 3 footage or your Mini 4 footage to a really good Rec. 709 color space. And then it also includes eight different distinct color grade looks that will give your footage a really distinct look. So if you're interested in that, then check the link in the description. And another reason the Pocket 3 is such an ideal travel camera is it's really inconspicuous. You can film with this, nobody really even notices that you're doing anything. Whereas if you're coming out with a giant DSLR camera, everybody knows that you're taking pictures or filming. The Pocket 3 is a much more inconspicuous way of being able to grab great video and great photos. And because it's gimbal stabilized, you don't have to concentrate too much on holding it still or holding it steady. And because both the Mini 4 Pro and the Pocket 3 offer great low light performance, it's not limiting like it used to be when you had smaller cameras where you could not film very well in low light. The Pocket 3, films some fantastic, in fact, some of the best low light imagery I've seen out of a camera of this size and this price range. But the Mini 4 Pro films really great low light as well. It's incredible how long after sunset you can still film with the Mini 4 Pro and get really nice, really usable imagery. But another reason these two together make one of the best travel camera combos is the ease of use. With the Pocket 3, it's super simple. You just flip the screen open, the camera turns on within a second, and then you can press record, or you can have it automatically start recording as soon as it powers on, which means literally within a second, the camera can be on and recording, and you don't have to worry about stabilization. The auto modes on it are really good. The normal color profile is even really good if you don't feel like color grading, but it makes it super fast and intuitive to use, which has made it one of the funnest cameras that I've had in a while to just go out and film with because it's just so easy and so simple to use. And then when you put that together with the Mini 4 Pro that has really great auto settings and really great active track, it makes it so that you can capture all kinds of fantastic footage without having to know or understand a lot of camera settings before you go out and shoot. This is super simple and super easy to capture great footage straight out of the box without having to do much other than turn it on, put it in the air, or start filming with it. 
Hey, if you're enjoying or getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing. My goal is to help solo creators like myself make good decisions when it comes to buying gear, but then also teach you the skills you need so that you can actually charge money and earn income from the equipment you have. And then we come to the price. And the way it is here, for under $2,000, you're gonna end up with the Creator Combo, which is $669, which gives you the battery handle, the DJI Mic 2, a wide lens, and then we have the Mini 4 Pro, which for $1,100, you can get the Fly More Combo with the lighter weight batteries, which keeps the drone under 250 grams, which is that magical number that all basically all around the world has a lot less restrictions on. But you still get the RC2, this nice remote with the screen that works great. So all said, you're into it for about $1,700 that gives you the ability to capture great aerials and stunning aerial imagery and great ground imagery. But my favorite thing about this and the reason I've been using it as a travel camera setup and why I recommend this as a travel camera setup is it's so small and so lightweight. Putting it all in a bag, hiking around with it, traveling with it, it takes up almost no space in your luggage. It doesn't cause you any issues in places that they might be a little worried about drones or cameras. It just makes it a super small and easy to use travel camera package that can give you incredibly nice, beautiful images. Now, next, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right here. I'll see you over there. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern, or we can have more of a conversation and I can get to questions that maybe I didn't get to in this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.